there's a new way to white balance your infrared images in Darktable. Is it better than the original method I covered in a recent video? Why would you use it? Let's find out. Are you interested in learning more about infrared photography? Check out my book. Details are at the end of the video. With Darktable's legacy white balance method, once a neutral color is determined, all colors are evenly adjusted as if lit by the same light source. With the modern white balance method, introduced in Darktable version 3.8, once a neutral color is determined, Darktable predicts how each surface in the scene would look. This method calculates a more perceptually accurate white balance. This can be helpful in scenes with a particularly complex white balance. However, there's a catch, which I'll cover at the end. Let's look at some examples. These images were shot with a 590 nanometer high pass filter. The image on the left uses the legacy white balance method. The image on the right uses the modern method. In both versions, I white balanced on the chairs in the pool. Both images use a red-blue swap in the channel mixer. In this case, the image is evenly lit with some light shadows. The differences between these are minor. The legacy version works fine. In both versions of this image, I white balanced on the clouds just above the hotel. If you look at the face of the far hotel in the shade, the legacy version has a slight red cast, while the modern version is cleaner. The same applies to the rocks in the foreground, especially those in the shadows. In the legacy version, there is a light red cast. The modern method does a better job of neutralizing that color cast. Finally, here's an image with more extreme white balance challenges. In both images, I set the white balance on the clouds over the mountains. While the clouds are pure white in both images, the colors in the foreground are dramatically different. In the legacy image, the cabanas and deck take on a red cast, which seem to blend in with the color of the trees. Whereas in the modern image, these take on a cream color, which is more visually pleasing and has more color contrast, allowing the palm trees to stand out. In this type of scene, the modern method does a better job of keeping the neutral elements of the image neutral. I covered setting a white balance using the legacy method in a previous video. You can check that out here. Now let's walk through how to set a white balance using the modern method. So here I'm in dark table and the first thing that I'll do is go into preferences. So it's this gear icon, show the global preferences. So within preferences, I want to go to the processing tab. Here in processing, there's a couple changes that I'll need to make. First is the auto apply pixel workflow defaults. I'm gonna change this from display referred to scene referred. And then the other change is right below it, the auto apply chromatic adaptation defaults. We'll change this. This is gonna be legacy when you first see it and we wanna make sure that that is set to modern. So those are the changes we need in the processing tab. Optionally, there's another change you could make that I like in the darkroom tab. And in here, I like to turn on this bottom option, check for name on addition of new instance. And we'll show you why that's important in a little bit. All right, so I'll close out the dark table preferences now that I've got that set. Now I can begin to make the changes to the image. So let's start with the white balance module. So I'll go here, we'll start with the modules that are enabled, and I'll pick up the white balance module. And the first thing that I wanna do is make sure that that module is enabled with the little power symbol. And then of the four setting options, unlike legacy where we, we use the selection here, we're actually going to use the reference setting. So that's the option on the far right. And that'll make the image look really red, but that's okay. We'll address that in a second. So that's the change we need for white balance. Now we're gonna go to the color calibration module. So if I go over to the colors tab, color calibration here at the bottom, or you can just type it in for the search. And I'm gonna turn on the color calibration module. And there's a few settings we need to check in here. So first thing you wanna do is you want the adaptation to be set to CAT 16. That's the best option here for setting a white balance. And then the illuminant is going to be custom. And then what we'll do is much like in the white balance module, we will use the picker to set our white balance. Now again, by default, the picker will draw a box that covers most of the screen and use that as an average for setting your white balance. But I wanna get a little bit more specific. So I'm gonna go up into the clouds here and I'm gonna select a region of clouds to set my white balance. And that's it. That's how you will set a white balance using the modern method. One of the challenges with the modern method is that the cat settings and the channel mixer 
are both in the color calibration module. When you apply a channel mixer preset to swap colors, the cat no longer works to set a white balance. The solution is to create a new instance of the color calibration module. Use one instance for white balancing and one for the channel mixer presets. This is where automatically prompting for the instance to be renamed is helpful. The channel mixer instance must be positioned above the one used for white balance. You'll get different results if the color calibration module with the channel mixer is above or below the output color profile module. In Windows, use Control Shift and drag or Command Shift and drag on the Mac to move modules. Thanks to Jorg for pointing out this new white balance method. Also, thanks to Leather Jacket for sharing the videos from IR Recams, which contain excellent tips using Darktable with infrared images, such as the module positioning. What are your tips for editing infrared images using Darktable? Let us know in the comments. If you'd like to learn more about infrared photography, check out my book, Color Doesn't Exist, a practical guide to infrared photography. It's full of details for photographers at all skill levels. Now available in print and ebook editions. Check it out at infraredbook.com. If you find these videos helpful on your infrared photography journey, like, subscribe, or comment. Hope you enjoyed. Thanks.